Hello. How are you, Michael? I have been great. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Wow. <laughs> so, where do you reside in London? What's the uh, area of London? I live. I live uh, outside London. Very uh, oh, place called where? Staines. Where? Staines. Staines. Okay. Okay. Now, just two stops away from Richmond. Yeah. Wow, man. Nice to finally meet you. Absolutely. Thanks for the opportunity and thanks for, for all you do for the community and for humanity as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me, your trip last week. Yeah, well, that was quite a wild wind. Uh, I was in Spain um, um, and then I had to travel to Estonia and Tallinn. So it was quite <laughs> quite crazy mm. last two two weeks but uh i'm back at home now i'm fresh so yes yeah <laughs> right so michael let's do this uh i want you to introduce yourself okay. and tell my audience who you are and what you do okay um my name is michael Awa. um uh, i i i'm a tall time founder uh with one management buyer to my first company um also i'm an angel investor um, I love find, helping other entrepreneurs um, I learn from the past mistakes, figuring out how to raise funds. And um, I'll consider myself an enabler. I enable mm. things to happen within the ecosystem. Um, that's what gives me joy. So if I'm to summarize myself, my name yeah. is Michael, and I just love um, building things, turning ideas into some uh, solving problem, and then turning them to a commercial viable business. And when I do find other entrepreneurs doing the same as well, when I'm in capacity to uh, invest in their product uh, I do as well as an angel investor and also I just love to connect uh, ideas to, uh, to 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 capital to resources to ecosystem and to just make magic happen great 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 tell tell us a little bit about what you have been up to the last few years because I I, I want you to talk about that because that will now take us down the lane I want us to go yeah, okay, 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 okay absolutely. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to try and, and be as uh, as precise as I can. So I don't okay. kind of, um, uh, in the in the last uh, 10 years, uh, it's been an amazing journey. Um, amazing journey as a Black person, amazing journey as a Black founder, amazing journey as a father, amazing journey as a, as an ecosystem um, player, and also okay. an amazing, amazing journey as a Pan-African as well. Um, and uh, when I, when I, the reason I kind of lay out that way yes. is if I'm to define myself, those are, those are bits, bits and pieces in my life that kind yes. of makes me who I am. Um, I've, I've built three companies. Um, I've had the uh, opportunity to work um, with international um, uh, diplomacy agency. Uh, there's a Fatima 2 project, um, which I was a uh, right part of, um, and that helps farmers in 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 about five states in Nigeria and okay. East Africa as well uh, uh, to 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 change their life through uh, um, agriculture, um, and that's a lot of massive learning from there. Um, um, and to starting my second company, uh, uh, which was uh, which we never took off uh, because we quickly realized we need to raise a lot of money, uh, and that was um, the whole concept was to build a new social media for specifically for Africa. Okay. Before we, even have, before we even have uh, uh, the, um, a lot of the social media platform that we had today. Uh, and I quickly realized that as, as a Black founder, I probably would not try a level of capital. Um, mm. I was expecting to. Um, an amazing gentleman that walked that journey together was a gentleman called Bowen Handy. Um, and we, 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 we launched what we call AfriFund. And the whole idea there was to, and it's still, it's still, the website is still live today, interestingly. Uh, and the whole concept there is um, I've witnessed during my time with uh, with IMF well, for the Amatu program, okay. a lot of millions of dollars being wasted uh, by uh, by a lot of these so-called donor agencies trying to solve a problem they're not emotionally, uh, mentally mm -hmm. uh, connected to. And and also often time, a lot of gov government parastatists in Africa uh, will often time misadvise this in, uh, donor agencies on what the real problem of humans are. And that's what led to building my second company in terms of how can we connect these uh, donor agencies directly to local problems. Um, okay. um, and we were able to make a bit of noise and 
but we quickly realized that um, maybe we're too far ahead of our time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, because we can see there was a lot of complexities, it was a pure uh, business to government uh, solution. Um, and I, th I think from there, I, I, I then uh, led me to a rabbit hole of, uh, of joining a company at a very funding stage okay. uh, in, in 2017, um, a company called Pondiex, where I was for one of the first five funding team member. It was a blockchain solutions based company. We were the first in the world to want to build uh, a closed loop payment system. Um, and I'm proud to say that. Um, and we, we managed to raise $32 million. Uh, wow. in, in 2017 and i helped that's them good. that's good absolutely Great. absolutely absolutely and i i helped them in terms of their business expansion in europe middle east and africa and one of the biggest achievements uh from from that startup for me was uh facilitating partnership uh with one of the uh dubai government agencies um, and that's around five million dollar worth of uh, of deal uh before i left um that particular company for a reason that I probably will not be on, 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 on this yeah. podcast see business <laughs> very different things happen in business yeah uh, absolutely absolutely yeah. but i think to me part of the things that happened in 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 my first journey working in the international diplomacy space kind of makes me begin to question a lot of things a lot of things about um about africa a lot of things about leaders a lot of things about my my role uh and place in that community as a Pan-African. And I'm proud to say, to call myself that. Um, I haven't traveled about 10 countries in Africa and I have consistently in the last 10 years invest and help people within that continent on a practical level beyond, uh, beyond, uh, uh, beyond advice. Okay. Uh, and, and, and so um, it, it makes me you know, question a lot of things. Um, and in 2018, I was just traveling uh, various um, places. Uh, I was in Nigeria, I was in Ghana, I was in Kenya. Um, just engaging. Um, and I remember uh, going to spending time in Nigeria, going to um, to meet on uh in, in Ilefe. And I remember sitting down and, and uh, he was like, what do you want? I said, I don't need anything. I'm just here to talk. <laughs> and, uh, that, must have been, that must have been refreshing to Anil Fife. It was like, okay. This, yeah. This... <laughs> one one who, does, who doesn't want anything. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And I, and I think to me, I think... Uh, what, been exposed in two, early on in 2007, uh, from 2015 and then 2017 during the Heli project in the blockchain space. I saw a very golden opportunity for Africa to build uh, what I called uh, its own um, wealth. Um, and I think that, you know, when you have this knowledge, you, you then go crazy when everyone hear about it. And I begin to engage leaders um, to the level of African Bank. Um, to people that will not mention their name on this call, um, very par high level institution to level central bank in Nigeria. I was just that ecosystem player, just on the ground, just floating around, just having this Pan-African conversation it was so born in my heart. And I, it, I, I, I was, um, uh, I, I get very frustrated because uh, I, realized, <laughs> I, I realized that our leaders are programmed to, to create pipelines rather than create systems uh, that, that then uh, sustain pipelines. And so mm. th that kind of uh, led me to, to then come into a conclusion that it's, uh, it's, it's 90 percent psychological and mind programming and 10 percent physical. Um, mm. so, and uh, um, I will go, I'll go deep into that as we ask yes, I, in, I, in our I really want you to okay absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and that led me to, uh, to finding um, uh, send the money in 2000, um, late 2029, 19. Um, and we, it, it, I was born out of frustration while I was trying to send money from Kenya into my UK bank account. And, and I, I couldn't believe how hard it was to send money from Africa to, to Europe and to send money back. Mm. Um, and, and to me, I thought as an entrepreneur, I thought, why not? Let's, I, I'm going to give it a go. Um, and I'm very grateful. Um, and also that taught me another lesson as well that um, um, as, as a black founder, there are a lot of highlights out there who don't look like me, but we're invested in seeing something good come out of my community. Uh, and, and I'm saying that, and I'm very grateful uh, to the like of Oxford University. We're back on, this, on that journey uh, to, to, to the likes of Innovate UK government giving us grants on that journey um, to, to, to an amazing angel investor, um, Gary Hawkins, 
um, who doesn't look like me, but was invested in making sure that we succeed. And I think yeah. to me, uh, it was um, it was really painful uh, after raising close to a million pounds yeah. uh, that we had to shut down the company. Uh, and I think that for me was a moment of humility because uh, I've never mm. experienced, uh, I'm a guy that loves to win. Uh, <laughs> so um, to, to then be faced with a very big failure, um, whichever way we want to call it, some people have said it's not failure, it's failing forward. But to me, okay. the farther we couldn't get, we couldn't scale the company to become a billion dollar company. That to me was a disappointment. Um, that was a disappointment in times of disappointing investors who believe in me as Michael. Uh, but then beyond that, there is a lot of lessons learned along that way. And I've been very grateful to, uh, to at least I've said I've mentored the 10 founders who are still working this journey in times of same, helping to make sure they don't make the same uh, mistakes or learn from yeah. potential pitfalls that we, we, we I encountered during send the money. So that's what I've been doing in the last two years till this very moment. I'm talking to you, Kenneth. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. I, I hope the, 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 the listeners find, uh, can pick one or two lessons from there as well. Good. See, um, a lot of people who don't uh, realize or understand that uh, entrepreneurship is a journey mm. i mean absolutely see now i i use the word entrepreneurship for not not tech status mm. people who solve problems absolutely. and build businesses around the solutions okay absolutely so anyone who can solve a problem and subsequently builds a commercial venture on that solution is an entrepreneurship, a, a, an entrepreneur. Sure. Okay. See, we learn a lot of things by digging into deep wells, difficult journeys. And People who like to solve problems, they fail a lot because I, I don't know if the best, the most successful entrepreneurs have uh, succeeded 10% of the time of the things they, they were attempted. I, 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 don't, I don't think 10% would be a good, a, 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 magical rates of success absolutely see people don't know how many times people try things and fail because they only see when they actually succeed and they think wow this guy he just blew nah excuse me the guy has been on the ground, worrying his head off. You know, trying so many different things until one actually succeeded Absolutely. to the extent that you now know him. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, see, I I like to talk to people who try things. See, I I, I use this word when I write. I talk about exploration. Mm -hmm. You see, I like people to explore. Mm. To explore things you don't know. Okay. Talk to people about things you don't understand. You know, and I think it's a, it's a exploration is the place I think young Africans should be in. You know, always exploring. Okay, thinking about things. Yeah, this podcast uh, is called Think Big for Africa because Absolutely. I think if you don't think big, you can't solve anything, even Absolutely. small things. Absolutely. We need to think. Thinking is a big deal. And I think it's something, unfortunately, I would say this, we lack, uh, we don't have enough people who actually think about things. You know, 
yeah, I, I love I love your, your, the journey you've been on. Uh, I know it's still ongoing. Absolutely. You know? so, Absolutely. <laughs> so, see, on this journey, I, 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 I saw you, at least I read your, your message on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, and the reason why I, I got, because by then I were not connected. So okay. the reason why I got to read your message is because one of my connect, uh, connectors made a comment on wow. your, on your page. Wow. Okay. So I saw that and I, I saw his comments and I laughed, you know, because he was, he was talking about something me and him have debated several times. Mm. All right. So the, 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 this is the, me the message you, you sent. I I'll just read a little bit of, of the, of the first paragraph. You said, uh, no, I think, I think it's the second paragraph somewhere, but this, what, what, what I, I decided to, to pick out. This failure dealt a massive blow to my, to my life as everything was on the line. But if a new beginning to a new journey of self-discovery about my place in the world and the legacy I want to leave behind when I'm gone, was born. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you... You, you think that failure, whatever happened that made you guys shut down, send it money, okay? It said it's a, it's, a, it's a failure, okay? But then you learned from it and it, ha it has propelled you on the next round of your journey. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Unfortunately, my friend, the other other part of the of the message, uh, you actually held yourself accountable, okay, for whatever happened, and the le the lesson you have you have gained. Absolutely. But my my friend had a a, a different view mm. that, in a, in essence. He absorbed you of the failure mm. and pinned it to the system. Mm. Okay. Now, yes, for me, sometimes the system is majorly at fault for certain failures. But as an, as a, as an entrepreneur, mm. you need to pick the lessons. And the only thing you have control of is your actions, not the action of the system. Absolutely. Okay. So if you indict the system and you blame the system for the next century, the system is not going to magically change. Absolutely. You need you need to adapt to fit the, the environment. I, 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 think, I think to me, the, the, the fundamental things um, and where I consider to be hard conversations uh, that we as black people need to start to have within ourselves, within our families, within our communities, within our, um, and our, our continent. And those conversations, uh, it starts from actually healing ourselves. Mm. Those conversations starts from accepting what we can't control. Okay. And making peace with what has controlled us. Okay. Um, and is understanding the life is a game. And the powers of control, humans, and wealth, um, influences still this very moment you're now having this conversation, they will not stop at that game. Life itself. Exactly. Is game, right. Yeah. And 
the power that you and I have as an individual is how we respond or how we, or our role in that game, right? And if your role you're playing as an individual, it's not something that you like, then you have to either change your role, or that will be an option. If you feel powerless enough to change your role, then maybe you need to change your environment. And if you feel powerless in changing your environment, maybe you need to create your own game. Okay. And so, and, and so to me, what I'm trying to say we're using that analogy is understanding that the world responds to power, the world responds to optimism, the world responds to, to what you put out there in the world. And I'm saying this because I know that a lot of people who probably consume this content are people who looks like myself and yourself. Yeah. And so I and that coming to that message when you said I then realized what my legacy is. And that legacy is how I want to be remembered as that individual that started a new conversation for black people across the whole world. Mm. And people will probably, and with, with due respect and with all humility of heart, people who are between age 45 and above, I don't think they're, 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 they're within that message. And the reason um, I've deliberately used that number is because these are children that were born by parents who have been through a lot of traumas. Yeah. And so in our, in our community, we don't talk about traumas. And so these traumas have been passed down from generation to generation. And so my message is mainly for people, younger people, people between age, um, age five, uh, which it will be them beginning to know what is right or wrong um, at the early stage, but still need supervision um, till age 43. And these people, they still have the capacity to alter the their, their existing program. They still have the capacity to reprogram the existing program. And the reason I call it program is because human mind, whether we're consciously aware or unconsciously aware, we've been programmed. Yeah. And whether you go to you go to the church, or whether you listen to your mom, whether you listen to the news on TV, whether you watch Netflix, every single information out there is trying to get your attention. It's trying to give you a new a new perspective. Is trying to coerce you into a new paradigm of thinking. And so to me, the moment we begin to create independent thinkers within our community, those are the moments that we begin to create a new identity for ourselves. Okay. And we've seen this from history. Yeah. When you, when you, when you see the so-called Pan-Africanists, the first leaders, um, and I step, I step on, the, on, the, on their shoulders, my ancestors that were taken across Africa during the slave, Atlantic slave trade, I asked myself a question one day. If my ancestors, if all these people today will wake up one day and look at me, what would be their response to me? And this is a question I want to leave with a lot of Black individuals who will, who will probably privilege to listen to this content or watch this uh, podcast. Mm. Like sit down in a very quiet space in your room and ask yourself, there's millions of lives that were, that were killed during the European invasion in Africa in terms of slave trade. These are my ancestors. These are your ancestors. If they're looking down on you and I in the spirit world, do you think they will be happy that their life, their soul, their blood is going to waste because you and I were busy lamenting and playing the victim? No. They died for me so that I can have the freedom and a new identity and a new place in the world. And that to me is a fundamental power that I came to that realization in the, my moment of just being human. Um, and there's a lot of things that I won't share on this podcast that happen in terms of being privileged to be in an altered state of mind uh, during a very deep meditation. And I have a first experience First on experience for those who believe in the paranormal world of, of literally seeing my ancestors singing the most beautiful melody I've ever seen. And that to me is where I set my new place in the world. 
And that to me, I believe is a reminder that there is a message that needs to get out there to every black soul on this planet. We need to stop blaming other people. We need to stop pointing fingers of my failure is because of this. The reason I can't get a corporate job is because I'm black. Those things exist in the world. Those things are real. So the system is rigged against us. Let's accept that. What if we then start creating our own systems? But that can only happen when we get to a place of identity, of understanding our place in the world, of understanding that we are no minority. We are the global majority. When it comes to economic power, we are the global minority. Mm. But when it comes to human population, we are the global majority. And the data is out there. By, one, by 2051 and five people, you're seeing the world will look like myself and me and you. Yeah. What are we going to do about that? When, we, when China has this one in a lifetime opportunity, they just start to turn their story around. Mm -hmm. By 2050, the Black continent, the African continent, will have this golden opportunity. But let's ask ourselves on a very human, psychologically, emotion, emotional level, are we ready? I would say I, no. I, I would say no. Thank you. And so that's the message I represent now, because there's a audience in that message. Because the audience in that message is when you go home today as a father, a father to either mixed race children or a black kid, how often do you tell them you love them? Mm. How often do you show emotions to them? The world, they're fighting the world already. You create a safe space for them to show that they matter. When you go to their school and their teacher tells them they're being naughty, do you go home and scream at them or you try to listen to them? These are fundamental things that we need to begin to address. These are fundamental messages that I represent in the world for people who looks like me. And for younger people who have had enough, because if you if you go on LinkedIn today as a social experiment, yeah, one thousand black professionals in in one month will find one thing or the other to post something that will still link race, that will link, still link to victimization, that will still point fingers at a particular certain community of people. I would still want to blame the entire world for whatever calamities is happening in their lives. Yep. And so to me, we need to be careful so that we don't end up actually playing the game they want us to play. Ooh. Please. <laughs> see, see, that's, oh my God. <clears throat> that has been my message. See, when, see, life, economic life is a game. That's it. It's a game. Whew. Throughout human history, at every point, in every region, life has never been fair. Never. See, it's in this era that we talk about fairness. Life has never been fair. Even nature has never been fair. Why does a certain region have all the gold? Why does a certain region have all the oil? gas and the others do not have the same thing so life nature if we want to talk about fairness in the way we talk about it life nature has never been fair okay so if we want to sit down crying that certain people have, have not been fair to us Okay, so 
So if you, if we continue crying and asking them to listen to our cry and change whatever they are doing, the fair unfairness to us, we are simply telling them we don't have any means to make it stop. That's it. And we are telling them we are powerless. And thankfully, knowledge, knowledge is the means to change anything. You can acquire knowledge. I can acquire knowledge. And if we work with the things we learn diligently in five, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, things will change for me and my community. Absolutely. I totally, I totally agree with that. See, unfortunately, unfortunately, some people want whoever we think is not being, un being unfair to us to stop what they're doing and then work to make everything fair for us. It's never going to happen. It is never going to happen. I agree with you, but it's also important to also point out that the message I represent is not for us to not call out this injustice. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no. It is, yeah. it is important for us to call out this injustice. It is important for us to talk about those injustices. Okay. It is also important for us to, to, to let people know that we're, we're aware. Okay. But what the message I represent, what the new message I'm trying to bring out to the world is to say, what then are we going to do about it? Okay. Okay. And that is getting to that place where we can then begin to realize that there is a story of Singapore. Singapore today was just announced. Exactly. As the most powerful passport in the world. Yeah. Taken over from Japan. Okay. There is a lesson. This is less than 50 years of story. Okay. This is yeah. not something that started. Singapore in the, in the, in the 60s. 300 years ago. Right. Was, was the, G, the GDP, I don't think, I think it was below Nigeria's. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I don't have the data, but okay. just but they, they were they were part. They were part. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think to me, the question that we need to start asking ourselves is how did they do it? Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, is yep. another story. Yeah. And one thing I love every time I travel to Dubai is they still they still put this when you when you drive on the on the road, there's still a tiny part of the road that is still they still put the desert sand. And I remember asking a friend uh, five years ago when I, uh, when I was there, and he said, that's to remind people that this, this beauty they're seeing today was once a desert. Ooh. And so to me, is understanding that we have the power to create our own economic powerhouses. Yeah. Right? And I'm not going to mention them on this call. I've... I've been part of various things that I can't mention in this call, trying to help African leaders, decision makers. Um, I don't believe that our politicians are the people that will help Africa. No. I believe that it's our institutions that will help Africa. Good. Because the moment you begin to understand that institutions, you know, when we probably talk about racism in the UK, they will say institutional racism, right? Why would people say that? Because as a black person, there is a ceiling to what you can be. The power that controls that society has created it that way to preserve his identity. Mm. Right? There is a fear that one that, that black people are agile and resilient and one day probably will take over the world. That's that is that existing fear. Okay. And it's that fear, the science of race, that has put us below the pyramid of race. Yeah, okay. And there's no way you go in the world today, 
people do not see you as a representation of something good. It is someone like you and I. And so the more we continue to play that game, the more we're feeding into that energy. Exactly. Exactly. And so my message, new message I represent is I know there is hard. I know there is tough. We have to accept it. But it's also it is possible to change. Also, it is possible to still break even. Also, it is possible to break through. And when you do, then you become a new story. Then you become a new identity. Then those children from age 10 to 5 to, to, to 20 to 16, yeah. then they can see something new, something fresh to what they used to say. I get a lot of young people reach out to me on LinkedIn and say, oh, thank you for all you do. Thank you for your inspiration. I don't know most of these people. Mm. Random Random entrepreneurs reach out to me. Yeah. Black entrepreneurs will reach out to me on LinkedIn and say, can you share experience with me? Can you share a story with me? I remember someone, my friend, one day like, these people, you're just going to burn yourself out for them. No. I have, a, <laughs> I have enough love to share with all of them. I have enough love within me to share with all of them. Because what you don't have, you can't give. Mm. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you're thinking from a place of scarcity, then you're functioning from a place of survival. If you're thinking from a place of abundance, then you're thinking from a place of thriving. And that's why I use the word is 90% psychological, it's 10% operational. Yeah. And so to me, the new message is to say, yes, we know. We know that there is inequality. We know that there is racism. We know that institutional racism. We know that we've been disenfranchised economically. We are aware that the system is not going to change anytime soon. When we make too much noise, they will make us our PR um, announcement. We see that during George Floyd Mayweather, where well, all the multinational companies in the world went on a hiring spree to hire um, uh, um, black, diversity black and inclusion, black people, just to fill that quota. Yeah. Right? What, what has changed? It's probably get worse. Right? And so this, that's, the, that's my message. My message is the power is economic power. The moment Africa creates its own institution, the moment we create our own alternative assets, the moment we gather liquidity for those assets, the moment those assets become liquid enough to create various financial products that is then accessible for Africans to trade. That is how Europeans create wealth. Yeah. That is how Americans create wealth. Yeah. There is, you don't need to go, and I, I'm saying this with, 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 with dull humility. We all can go to Oxford and go to MIT and go to have all these good labels just to get by in life in terms of social um, structure. But the key point is these institutions are created as well as the institution as gatekeepers. Mm. And there's nothing stopping us. Today, Indian, Indian, Indian Institute of Technology, every, yeah. every biggest Indian CEO in the world today are from that institute. Yeah. And today, they're doing really well in their community. What can we learn from them? And so this, 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 that's my message. That's the new message I represent. Yeah. There's nothing wrong if you want to continue to, 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 to point out those injustices. We need people to do that. But let's be careful that we're not weaponizing that to those individual advantage and actually doing more damage in the process to the entire community. Okay. Okay. I hope people get it. And uh, see, uh, the only way we will have the seemingly fair fairness is uh, you bring value. That country, if we build our national institutions, okay? Because, see, we need those institutions for things to work in our countries, okay? So if we... We have the institutions, but they're not functional, okay? Uh, so we need to revive them 
to make them functional, to help individuals and corporations and business and all that to thrive. See, institutions create enabling environments. Okay, so this is what we need, we need in our countries. And once we have it, we'll now churn out more value to the world. And once we are able to see people, people talk about Africa having the, the most uh, natural resources. I tell people, natural resources doesn't get you recognized. You use uh, Singapore. Singapore doesn't have one dime of natural resources. Japan doesn't have. Yet, Japan for nearly 50 years has been the second largest, largest eco economy in the, in the world. Now, Singapore is getting up there. Maybe it's now third or fourth, third or uh, fourth or fifth largest economy. Yet, they don't have natural resources. So these are the things that we need to look at because if you continue saying, oh, natural resources, hello, did you put gold in the ground? No. But the kind of value you, that, that you, 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 you bring out from your head, your knowledge, would, would turn the gold maybe into diamond. And then they will respect you. See, re value, knowledge and value are respected. That's, that's what I was, I was looking for, the respect, okay? Those are things that get you respect, okay? Just having all the natural resources doesn't get you respect. The people who get respect for the oil we have in Nigeria are those who actually found a use of the, of the oil. If they didn't find a use for this black liquid, the oil will be useless. Uh, 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 absolutely. And I think to me, it's, 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 it's understanding that um, um, every society is a reflection of its, um, of its citizen. Yeah, and and every leader that's got to govern the country is it's also a reflection of its citizens as well, and it's a really hard uh, truth for us as Africans and Black people to stomach. Um, and I think to me, and I'll still say this, you know, we believe so much in in putting sweat and power into making things happen, um, and I think. The moment people begins to have their mindset and their mind shift, that like everything they're gonna do in their life is ninety percent psychological, it's ten percent operational. Now you can you can do the social experiment. If you ask, if you have ten professionals in your network who are either physically born out or mentally born out, or probably hate their job, which is easy to find. Yeah, everywhere. <laughs> if you ask them, what is it that they are frustrated about their job? You will be surprised that ninety percent of them would, would not actually talk about the job, the day-to-day -day activity. Mm. It's either going to be the line manager that micromanages them, or it's going to be the um, um, co-workers, the gossip about them, or someone who just one reason or the other undermine them, or doesn't, mm. or doesn't appreciate them, or they don't feel value or, or appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And so when you look at that, that tells you that everything you're going to do in life, whether you're black or white, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's 90% psychological. And so when somebody wants to bring you down, they're not going to physically come attack you with No, gun. no. The that, first was, thing, that was old school. That's correct. The first, thing they're <laughs> gonna, the first thing they will come for 
is 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 a psychology. Yeah. And and that's been the weapon against our community. Yeah. And so the only way we the, our community will bounce back is to change the application because what we're doing right now is we're doing ninety percent physical, operational, and ten percent psychological. So. Mm. And that's why when it's easy for us to, for, for all the global powers to manipulate our leaders, to manipulate the citizens, it, that's why it's easy for a Chinese person to go to Africa and do business and succeed. But other diaspora Africans who go to Africa and do business, they won't succeed. Yeah. And why? Excuse me. Because the people on ground probably trust the that Chinese. person. That outside, that person coming into that continent more than the person who looks like them. Yeah. So... That's the message people like myself then stands for. I want to be that channel to share with those young, hard young people that it is possible. My story is our story of it is possible. My story is our story of forgiving yourself, forgiving your oppressors. You know, Maya Angelou, she said something to us. If you have the capacity and the heart and, the, and to love those who hate you, then you truly love. You know, it's a mental, it's it's a lot of boredom to go out every day and think you're not needed, yeah. you're not yeah. wanted, right? The other day there was this video circulating on, on um, I, don't, I can't remember one of the social media. There's this black guy that was on the train and then filming people who doesn't want to sit beside him. And so to me, I respect that, that you, you can call that whatever name, that they don't want to sit beside you. Mm. But do you have also give them the benefit of doubt that maybe that's their own preference? So if people don't want to sit beside you, and that psychologically gets to you to the place of you reacting to that, that your life has been, has been controlled. Yeah. Yeah. And so to exactly. me, it's how do we get to a place where you become psychologically resilient, that you become magnetic enough to attract good things into your life. And that's the message I'm trying to bring to the world, to my community, to those young black kids, black girls list, that will listen to this. Yeah. Whoever knows, maybe in the next 10 years from now, this will still be online and they yeah. will listen to it. And so to me, my message to them is a message to say, let's forgive ourselves. It's a lot of pain. It's a lot of body to wake up every day thinking no one wants you, thinking institutions uh, hate you, thinking your co-workers are micromanaging you. It's a lot of mental power, energy every day. Yeah. To continue to live your life like that. Even if you don't want to forgive these people, forgive yourself so that you can live that life. You know, I... I uh, see, I, 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 I recommend forgive them. Now, yeah, you don't absolutely. forget. I won't, I won't, I won't uh, advocate forgetting. No, but forgive them. See, the person who gains the most from forgiveness is the person who give who forgives people. That's correct. And 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 certainly that's my message. And that message is yeah. to say. It's really tough. We have to acknowledge that. And it's important to acknowledge that because we don't want to live in denial. Yeah. But it's more peaceful, more enjoyable to think from that place where you don't need those validations. Yeah. And it's important. And that's the message. It's obviously like we acknowledge this. But what are you going to do about it? How are you going to respond to it? Because one thing I've 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 been privileged to work with um, if I'm allowed to use this, I've worked with some few hassles in my in my in, in my career, <laughs> right? And some few psychopaths. And if there's one thing that makes a psychopath wins, yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care, and it yeah. derives joy <laughs> in, know, in, in knowing that you're in pain. Exactly, exactly. And so your reaction to ease our action, it's actually what makes you empowered. It's actually the power you have. 
And so that's, that's, that's my message is to say, I'm not saying that we should ignore or close our eyes to racism. I'm not saying we should close our eyes to a lot of inequalities against our community. I'm saying that we need a new conversation. We need a new identity. We need a new people. I want, I, I don't want young people to still grow up. You say from the days of, in the days of, uh, of, uh, of um, um, the first Black Wall Street, um, I've forgotten uh, the, the name. Yeah, uh, um, what, what, uh, oh, I've forgotten the name. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a movie about that, you're mm. right. We've continued to, to sing this process. Yeah. Yeah, the movie about Amazing Grace. There's a lot of movie out there. Continue to remind us those are doing more damage psychologically to us than good because they continue to remind us of, of, of what the world wants us to be, slaves. I want to stand a new, I want to be a new conversation to remind people that you are a royal, you are kings and queens, you are mentally resilient. That is the reason why the world is afraid of you. And okay. that's your, and that's your power. Now, now, you say you are a pan-Africanist. I know a lot of our our leaders in the 60s who won our independence uh, were pan-Africanists. Okay. Now, pan-Africanism has not, I don't think it has achieved its goals from the sisters. So also our countries have not moved forward. In fact, in fact, if we if we use GDP, we have actually moved backwards. And those who were behind us has passed us. Yeah. So why do you think this is? I, I think to me it still comes down to what we've been talking about. And, and I'm going to repeat that a lot on this podcast. Okay. Is, is every human, if you can just close your eyes and imagine yourself as, uh, as, a, as a blank canvas. And so on that blank canvas, you are your own artist. Hmm. And the, the problem with that is you have to draw. If you yeah. don't pick up the pen and the draw, brush, yeah. the brush and draw, the brush will pick itself up and draw what it brushed. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> and, and so to me, it's understanding that uh, we are the architects of our own life and the master of our own destiny. Uh, it's a quote of a philosopher that I can't yeah. remember right now. And so to me is understanding that, and I stand to be corrected, every single leader leading Africa today are still suffering from our collective um, um, trauma of the past. Hmm. Right. When, when they come, they make us hate each other. When the colonial master came, they make us hate each other. They make us lose our own religion. They what they beat out of us is identity. Because uh, now, Michael, I, 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 wait, wait. I, I, I'm okay. coming there. I'm coming okay. there. I'm coming there. And the reason they do that is because they know that the moment you every single person wants to belong to something. And the moment there is no identity, a human doesn't have identity. Anyone can tell that person that he or she stays, he will accept. Okay. It is a collective, collective knowledge enough, or it can be emotionally related. to it. And so the concept of Pan-Africanism is a, it's not even a concept of some heroes came and then the fought and then the won and we all clap. No. That concept is, is a very spiritual concept finding the word called Mbutu. And I would strongly highly recommend every Africans, wherever they are in the world, to go learn about that word. There is a collective consciousness uh, for people that function in a higher plane spiritually. That's a collective consciousness that guides us as black people across who we are in the world. And that what that word says is high heart. 
because we all have. I don't have because we all do not have. And um, I'm privileged, my mother, she's Yoruba. And I remember in those days growing up as a little kid, they used to teach us something called a Moluabi. Mm. And when you look at that, that Moluabi is told that collective consciousness of Mbutu. Mandela discovered it of great memory, Diva. Desmond Tutu, these are our own heroes that are trying to tell us something. We're not individualistic people. We are people who, who loves community, who craves community. Our power is in the community. Yeah. And that's what will make us strive. And so it's difficult for me today as an African to travel to another African country than it is to come to Europe or to go to the power of the world. Mm. So they're fundamental things that we need to get right in that. And so if it's more difficult for an African today, if a Nigerian travel to Kenya, South Africa today, there is possibility of, there's a potential of being killed because they probably thought um, they, they, they're getting invaded. And so these are the people who lived before, before you and I that have tried to solve this problem. And so to me, this is the new conversation that I stand for. And so Pan-Africanism starts from my place of identity. And when people ask me, where are you from in Africa? I say, no, I'm an African. And I've seen someone argue me in the past that you can't say you're an African. Where exactly are you from? I say, I'll tell you one thing. When they draw the map of the world, they make Africa sound, looks like a country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is a blessing in that. Okay. And the blessing in that is if they have every single person that come out of Africa, embrace the identity of Africa, and see themselves as African, and beginning to mentally, spiritually, emotionally function as African, then we have a shot. Okay. Now, from that, if the, if if we want to push that that idea, then every everyone. Every human being is African. That that is correct. And, okay. And okay. So there's a fundamental. There's a funda Yeah. Th th there's a fundamental historical context to that. Okay. Now, but, please. Okay. Go ahead. Co co continue. Continue. But I I'm trying to say this in the context of of a modern day Africa. Okay. Um. You no, know, because when we want to start going into that, we're going to the into civilization yeah. and and then the, the, Egypt, the Egyptology and all this and then the Nubians and Mesopotamia. We're then going to go into a whole lot of histories. Yes. One thing I love about history is history is great, but history can actually destroy more than it's ever going to give us. Mm. Okay. Right? Okay. And now, I, <laughs> yeah. Please. So so the, the, my my point is this. My point is this. I've talked to a lot of young people who want Africa to be one. You do. I'm not opposed to it, okay? I'm not. But, you see, in truth, before the Europeans came to Africa, Africa was not one. That's the truth. Today, we still, we now know we are the most diverse continent in the world in terms of tribes, languages, in fact, science know that Africa has every single gene that people across the world have. You can find them in Africa because Africa is the origin of the human race. Okay? And that and that, that that's exactly why we are so diverse. Okay. Now when the the continent is so diverse 
with so many different languages, culture, and ethnic groups without acknowledging that, without consciously working to bridge the gap between groups. We, can, we cannot have that one Africa. See, we can say it, but in truth, we are so very different people. In fact, the one that is very, very clear to everyone are North Africans. North Africans are very, their looks, okay, and, and their culture, And on, interestingly, they have been part of the modern, I use the word modern, written civilizations. North, North Africans were known before when Europe were villages. In North, Amer North Africa, they had cities. Way, way back, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire. Yeah. Okay. So my point is this. We are very different. We are very diverse. Now, if we want that one Africa, we need to do the work. Just saying we want this will not make it happen. That we need to do the, do the work. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. I, I, I think to me, it's very important to, to always understand the purpose of the conversation because yeah. the, the purpose of the conversation is think big for Africa. Yes. Okay. And so it's important for us to acknowledge our diversity. It's important yeah. for us to acknowledge our differences, right? Humans, I, I, I say this with... Um, when I'm when when I have privilege to be in uh, uh, in in a spiritual gathering, uh, I always say this: life. I believe life is a is a game of hide and seek. Mm. <laughs> right, and and it looks like um, that's how whatever you believe in, whether God or Jesus or Imam or Imam or Allah, or whatever you believe in, it's just believe that this unified force um, enjoys it, because what makes us an evolved man. His understanding is a hide and seek game and enjoying the playfulness. And that's why when we when a child is born, until we begin to, to infiltrate their mind and how they reason and see the world, there are all this constant movement of playfulness. And it looks like life is always trying to take us back to that place of hide and seek. And you know, I say this too, um, uh, to, 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 to my friend the other day. I said, has he ever occurred to you? That one of the best games children love to play is a game of hide and seek. Mm. He said, Why? I said, Why do you think children love that game so much? He said, I'm going to hide. I'm going to count one to 10. Let's see if you can find me. And it just looks like life loves to play that game with all of us. Yeah, I right? agree. And, and so to me, thinking big for Africa is understanding. And I say this to people. And that's a conversation, a uh, big part of the new conversation that I, I, I belong to and I want to be for, the, for my community and for Africa. It's to see the, from, the, from the past horrible history, I don't want to go back to those histories. I'm aware of those histories. And I okay. want every Black person and every African to be aware of those histories because that tells them their place in the world because it, before their history was destroyed. Okay. And that helps them to build a new sense of identity that is based on power, that is based on resilience, that is based on loyalty, right? But they need to be careful. We need to be careful because by the time we then begin to go into history, history will always give us, will always play hide and seek with us because history will always leave us with who is right or who is wrong. Mm. 
And the reason humans, Africans have not evolved is because we're constantly looking for who's right and who's wrong. And when there's millions of abundance, opportunity in front of us, it looks like sometimes we get too consumed about those histories. Those histories are great. Those histories give us those painful reminders not to forget who we are. But we need to be careful that we don't become victims of history. And so my message is to say, it's not just about talking about Africa. My software developer, one of my software developers that I hired during Sunday morning was an amazing soul from Marrakesh in Morocco. Okay. Probably one of the most amazing soul I ever worked with. Very selfless. The first CTO I worked with was like lineage from Lebanese. Again, probably one of the amazing soul I ever worked with. I've been privileged. I think entrepreneurship has opened me up to thinking from a place of value and bringing people together who aligns with that value. Mm. And I think maybe that's the new mindset as Black people that we need to begin to have. And understand that when Europeans came, the French went to the Francophone African country. They know that the only way development can happen is to have a commonality of, of language and purpose. Yeah. And so they forced French in them. In the Anglo, uh, Anglophone um, um, part of Africa, they forced English language in us. So instead of us continually re remind ourselves of our th different tribes, maybe there is a blessing in that. I'm, I'm totally wrong on this, but maybe there is a blessing. Because something powerful came out of Nigeria, and that is Pidgin English. Yep. And you will be surprised today that the Pidgin English is growing so powerful that even when you go to North Africa, you'll be surprised people speak Pidgin English. Mm -hmm. So maybe there is a blessing in that horrible history. <laughs> and so as an entrepreneur, the way my mind is programmed to function is to learn from mistake and not dwell on that mistake and pick the lessons of what works and what doesn't work, right? When we build a product, we'll say, validate the product, test the product, retreat, repeat. Mm. Mm. Maybe we can bring that mindset to how we want to build Africa. Maybe we can validate Africa as a product. Maybe we can then test it. And so that's why you see that younger people who looks like me today doesn't want to be bound by borders. People like my father, my brothers, and yeah. that's why I use the word from age 45, yeah. they, they will never subscribe to this. <laughs> Seriously? That's the truth. And you can do your social experiment in this. And, wow. there's a, and there's a reason for that. Because in those days, people take advantage in a very strong sense of affinity. Oh, yeah. That's true. Right? That's and true. that very strong sense of affinity, let's face it, is only one thing people in that age bracket hold dear. No, see, it, it's, 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 uh, I don't know if it's genetic, but uh, people like, you, me you mentioned that, people like to belong to a community. Before the city states and countries, and and this is why it was possible for slavery to have thrived in Africa for a long time, starting with us in Africa, and then the Arab trade, which was there before the Europeans came, okay? But it was easy to capture slaves in Africa because they were not many uh, cities. They're small, small villages without solid security. So people from bigger 
places, towns, in quotes, can easily pick up some strays. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, I read this book by, uh, who was this, this great uh, 14th century Arab, not, not, not African. Uh, ooh, his son, son name is uh, Kadun, Ibn Kadun, yes. About uh, Asabia, yeah. That's, that's Asabia is a word that depicts uh, about something communal. It's a, it's a word that a, a, Arab people like to, to talk about the, the, the uh, tribal lineage and things like that. Yeah. Well, you ch check out, there's, there's a book called that, Asabia. It's a, it's a very interesting co concept. You know, so see, people like to be a member of a of a community, and that's 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 a long. And absolutely, I'm not yeah. I've been mindful of our time as well. I, I'm oh. not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying people should leave their uh, subscription to what their affinities are. Mm. What I'm but, saying see, is, people what, need to be con consciously ab 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 yeah. Absolutely. So, so yeah. to me, I think. People must be able to have the power to subscribe to what works. Yes. And unsubscribe for what, what doesn't work. If I have a Good. subscription today with um, a particular uh, Wi Fi pro, uh, broadband provider, if I don't like that service, you change. I'll change to another provider. Yeah. And so, to sum up my message, is to say if something has not served us, well, till this very moment, yeah, we we'll change it. Maybe it's time for us to unsubscribe from that provider, yeah, <laughs> and then subscribe to a new provider. And good. And what is that new provider? That's a new provider where we then need to make peace with those horrible histories. You can, you can see now you've just validated a social experiment. Yeah, right. You've by going into a bit of that history, somebody who is not mentally and emotionally on a very higher plane would take some things personal from them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that will open a whole lot of conversation, right? Oh, see, and, and, well, and okay, finish, finish, sorry, sorry. And, and that's what I'm trying to say. In times of saying, whether you're North African, I love you as a brother, as yeah. a sister, I love you. Whether you're, you're Zulu, I love you as a brother. Whether you're uh, a uh a, a Kenyan, yeah. wherever you are in Africa, I love you, my brother, because in the mind of the world, we are all compressed together into one identity. Yeah. And when the economic, economic opportunities have been shared on global stage, it's shared accordingly, according to that. So when company begins to do the internalization strategy, um, and you must have come across this, yeah. they'll say, um, North, North America, South America, and then they'll probably have I, Europe, yeah. they would don't have Euro, e, 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 EMEA region, I, but then yeah, they'll, yes. they'll, and then just, just see how that the, the group is. They didn't say, I'm he, Africa, Europe, mm -mm. Europe, Middle East, yeah, and Africa. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there, there is something they're reminding us every time. Every of those things a reminder of how economic opportunities mm. have been explored. Okay, and and every single economic power in there in the world, whether startups, whether scale ups, they will explore the inter internalization strategy based will, on this. Yeah, yeah, that's and it's be, and it's it's becoming numb. They would they would not say internalization strategy for South Africa, for East Africa. For West Africa, no, no, no. Mm, they mm. put all of us together in one single economic bracket. Yeah, yeah. And so to me, it's maybe, like you said during that conversation, maybe it's high time we subscribe to a value-based system. Yeah, that, that's it. And move away from emotional-based system. I'm not Good. saying we, we should be less human. Don't get no, me wrong. No, no. Yeah? But what I'm saying is, 
I want us as humans, as Africans, to begin to embrace that collective identity. No one can go to there and then say, we're gonna erase the word Africa. It's too late. And wherever you go in the world, people will always ask you, some people in the world today still believe Africa is a country. Yeah. Okay. Most, as mostly mostly Amer Americans. As, <laughs> as, as ridiculous as it sounds. <laughs> and so are you then going to go and then start reorientating over millions of people who yeah. believe Africa is a country? It's too late for that. Nah. And so, but there is a blessing in that. And the blessing in no, that. No, see, uh, see, yes. I, I, I absolutely agree with you on this. Absolute, on this okay. Absolute, so, absolute. so uh, all, all I'm doing is, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? I'm just asking questions because I know absolutely. my audience will, will like to pick up those things. Yeah. Absolutely. For, absolutely, for, me, absolutely. for me, for me, uh, I subscribe to the human race. Okay. Why? Am I talking about Africa? Yes, I'm, I'm African. And Africa is be, behind. And I know that before Africans in as a collective get respect from the other members of the human race, we need to dig dig my ourselves out of our current position. Yeah. See? And, then the, and then the question will be, how do we do that? And, well. And, and so the number one that I believe, stronger believe the first way to do that is coming to a place of acceptance. Okay. Of I, where, I, I, I do agree. Of course, of where we are in the world and then dream a new collective dream together of where we really want to be. And this is, the, this is achievable. There is, oh, yeah. it's not rocket science. And I've said this to a lot of quite powerful leaders that I can't mention on this call who are African leaders that I've been privileged in my, in, my, in my little time on this planet to sit down with and have breakfast with and brainstorm with. And I'm sure some of them will probably by chance will listen to this. And it's this, I'm using this channel as well to reach out to their consciousness again Yeah, for them to know that Anything that will make the world respect a black person in the world will start from Africa. Oh yeah, when the that's, a, that's, that's the truth. Today, the whole world is respecting a Chinese person because China, as a country, is now a hard power. Exactly. And so, my message is: when our leaders go on a global stage, they go to bed. Why do they go to bed? It still comes down to that place of identity. And so that's my message to the younger people coming because this older generation, they're not going to be there forever. Yeah. By yeah, 2050, a lot of them that are leading Africa today. All, all of them are, are gone. They will be gone. A lot of them go. Wow. And so that's my, my, that my message is for people who looks like Michael today will, will potentially be in a position of power yeah. to drive Africa tomorrow. Okay. Is to, is to say, Let's embrace a new identity. Let's think from a place of abundance and not from a place of survival. Okay. Let's rewrite our memory to accept those power of horrible histories and work with it. You see, as entrepreneurs, we find ourselves in a shitty situation. Yeah. We don't run away. We work with it. Yeah. And so maybe it's time for us to embrace an innovative mindset and begin to work with those horrible histories. They're horrible. They're not, they're not nice. But maybe there is a blessing in those in those horrible histories that we can work with. And lastly, yeah. it comes down to economic empowerment. That's it. And Africa is big enough to create its own value. And if there's any leader in Africa today listening to this, we're very serious. There is a template like, that I've been through that I can share. It's not okay. rocket science. It's not rocket science. At the end of the day, Anyone in the world today who is an African, I would strongly recommend for you to type into your Google a petrodollar system. Mm, okay. All right. And an euro dollar system. And when you understand these two systems, every African leader needs to understand these two systems. These two systems back and powers the global economy as we have it today. Yeah. 
and Africa is big enough to create its own system. But the problem is we have people coming into Africa, teaching us that what only work is pipelines. We don't, need, <laughs> we don't need pipelines. We need to begin to create our own systems. Nigeria has the stock exchange. How many Nigerian startups have listed on Nigerian stock exchange? Very, very few. Very, very few. Yeah. South Africa have a stock exchange. How many South African companies today have li- startups, scale ups, have listed on the South African stock exchange? Very few. So we need to understand that the world, everything in the world is a game. And if the global game at this moment doesn't favor Africans and Black people, we need to create our own system. We are 1.7 billion people. There is enough enough economic power to power a continent without looking outside. Wow. And, and, I, I, and, just, and, and, and just to validate that, I, hmm. I love to end with two, two things because it's good to talk about things. I'm a practical thinker because I okay. love to live in a practical way. There was a time in, in African history when big brands used to fly in American singers into Africa. Yeah. I remember those days as a Nigerian when Idris Abdul Karim and 50 Cent had a fight in, <laughs> in an aircraft. It became a global news, right? But when you look today, every single American artist are begging to do collaboration yeah. with Afrobeat artists, artists from Nigeria, from Ghana, from, from Africa. Yeah. What has changed? I'll tell you what has changed. What has changed is some individuals get frustrated with the system here. And they have a split moment in their subconscious that they can do better. Marvin Records, 419 Squad, The Bunch. They have a split moment. These folks are all in Southeast London. But something triggers in their brain that they can do better. And today, the whole world can have enough of Afrobeats. Yeah. And so to me, that's what I mean by saying it's ninety percent psychological, it's hundred percent it's ten percent operational. Yeah. Today, Rock Nation is going to Africa to go invest, not to fly them to America to come and to come and lick their houses. No, no, <laughs> that's not happening. And and just to kind of reiterate that, another thing, put it put it entertainment and Afrobeat aside. Let's choose another practical thing: the startup ecosystem. There was a time in the history of the world when people see Nigerians, the first thing that comes to their brain is for one eyes. Yeah. It's fraud. But you know, in the last three years, that's beginning to change on global scale. That, that's good. And, we, and we why? have a lot of things to, to do and, the world. And why? Because today, an average child do mine in Nigeria, for every time they read about Flutterway, for every time they read about Paystack, for every time they read about Money Point, for every time they read about Hokra and all these amazing founders doing amazing stuff. For every time they read about Noah Yawini, your piggy vest. For every single time these young people read about these people, they also believe it is possible. Yeah. And that's the, that's the message I represent. Yeah. And today, African founders are now going to beg for capital. If they create enough value, Capitals are going into Nigeria. Capitals are flowing to Egypt. Capitals are flowing to South Africa. Capitals are flowing to Ghana to go meet those ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, Today and we that, are... that's what we want. Absolutely. And so to me, if we all believe, because it's easy for our mind to trick us that it's a long way, like Mandela <laughs> told us, to freedom. But let us remember that if the whole world today can listen to Afrobeat. I remember five, six years ago, I was in Harrod in London. And guess what they're playing? Oliver, Oliver, the bunch. I thought, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they right? play and they play some Afrobeat on NBA courts. That's what I'm saying. So, so that is for us to know that the moment we come to our place of power, the moment we understand that it's ninety percent psychological and it's ten percent operational, and we put in the work from our, we do the inner work. Yeah, understanding our place from a place of power. When we talk and when we move, the word listens and the word respected. Okay. And that's my message. That's the message okay. I stand for. Wow. 
Macho, Michael, you have been, uh, you have given us some powerful vision of Africa. I mean, uh, you have answered practically every question I had uh, without us even, uh, without me even asking you those questions. Okay, so let's, let's, and end this uh, wonderful conversation. Okay, so two questions, but I want you to put them together. What's your advice to young Africans? I know you have started from the last, uh, your last comments. And then what is your vision for Africa in by 20, 2050. That's interesting that you actually mentioned yeah. the word 2050 because that's, <laughs> that's a very significant year. I think yeah. to me, my, my message is very simple. Uh, my message is we're hearted, we're hungry, we're pissed up, and it's okay to be. Okay. But please, Let's not allow those things to define us. Let's feel all those negative emotions. Let's feel all those anger. And let's use them to power us into a new way of doing things. Let that enable us to know that it is possible. Okay. Right? When I started my first company, it's tough to raise capital, but do I raise capital? Yes, I do. I just keep talking about it until I find people who believe in that vision, who are aligned to without value. It took me eight months to raise first capital for sending the money. But did we try? Yes, we tried. Did we give it a shot? I gave it hard. But let me tell you, people who took a bet on me, 90% of them don't look like me. If I've been too into myself and thinking they don't like me, I will have shut the opportunity from coming towards me. Yep. And that's my message. That's my message is for is for you to is for young people to understand the power of allyship and cultivate a culture of building a very strong allyship base. Because you will be surprised. Sometimes you think it's your community that believe in your vision. Sometimes oh. it's the people that you think are your enemy that will end up becoming the power to realize your vision. And so to me, please be open-minded. Please have so much love in your heart that you don't even have any room for, for hatred. Yeah. Uh, you know, function from a place of abundance that even when you have nothing, you feel like a man that have everything. And lastly, it's for you to know that every single action you take as a black person, there is at least 10 black kids watching you. Because it's all about representation. Mm. And so that could come with some blessing and cost. For every time I put myself out there in the world, I ask myself, what do I want 10 black kids growing up in Southeast London, growing up in Brixton, growing up in Dagenham, or Barkin? in Stratford, what's the message I want to live with it? And that message is to say, I'm not saying they're going to become a superstar, but I'm just saying, irregardless of all the pain, irregardless of all the obstacles, it is possible. Yeah. My message to them is a message of possibility. Do you not allow the concept of they don't like us, they don't want us, they don't give us opportunity, to kill your dream. If you have enough faith and you put yourself out there in the world with honesty of character, the world will respond accordingly to support you. Amen. And I'm a, living, I'm a living testimony to that. Yeah. So, what vision of Africa you want to see if all these young people take your advice 
I, 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 I'll probably say I've already started seeing that vision of Africa. Two weeks from now, I'm going to be in Kenya. I'm going to spend a week in Kenya. Oh. I, I, I enjoy the continent. I enjoy the beauty. I enjoy the food. I enjoy, you know, it's, I think the world responds to the energy you put out there in the world, right? Yeah. Uh, and so to me, I'm not, I'm not waiting for 2050 to see the beauty in Africa. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already experiencing beauty in Africa. I was in, last year, I spent about uh, uh, three months in Ghana back and forth. I went with family in December uh, to Ghana. We spent like a whole month in Ghana. I love it. Amazing. I was in Lagos. I was in Abuja. To me, I was in Cape Town. I was in Juba. Africa is beautiful. Right? Yeah. And, and so to me, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait till 2050. Uh, to start seeing that bigger vision for Africa. It's happening right now. And I, and I say this to a lot of people when I have the opportunity. The young people between age 16 to 25, they have new dreams. And these people, I believe, have the hope for Africa. Yeah. These young people believe it is possible. When you log into Hopwalk today, which is a hiring platform, these young people are already selling their services, their talent to multinational companies. Those multinational companies might be paying them peanuts today. But in the future, that will not be the case. No, and and they are they are learning. They are learning. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Facebook, Google, they are opening HQ in Africa. Amazon will not uh, uh, will not tell the world today. Um, it's, it's, it's biggest um, its biggest revenue generation comes from something called Amazon Cloud. Yeah. That piece of technology was developed by South African, uh, and, and so the world might not talk about this uh, or, or, or give it opportunity. But it's happening. Um, during COVID, South Africa uh, was politically punished because they were so advanced in times of how they reporting new variants. Because the global power doesn't believe that uh, that level of sophistication and reporting and data capture has to come from Africa. It's happening. And so the world will continue to live in that denial while Africa continues to do what it needs to do. And so to me, and by, by 2050, I, see, I, I want to see an Africa where I don't need to travel out of Africa to realize my dream. I want to be able to stay in Africa and realize that dream. And it's happening. It's not something that will happen in the future. It's happening right now. The younger people right now in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Accra, in Nairobi, in Kenya, in Joburg, in Cape Town, thinking of solutions to African problems and creating companies to solve this, this problem for millions of people and changing lives for themselves and for their community in the process. That wow. to me, it's not something that's gonna happen in 2050. It's happening right now. It's happening in the music industry, in the entertainment industry. It's happening right now in, 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 in the tech industry, in the software industry, in the, in the service-based industry. It's, it's a ripple effect that's gonna come, right? When you see what is happening in Rwanda, every single African now are talking about Rwanda. Yeah. That is going to turn to a new ideology, a new model that every African wants to see in their country. That is how change happens. And that's what will power the new spirit of Africa. And so to young people out there, 16 or 25, it's tough. I acknowledge that because I've been through that journey and I'm yeah. still going through that journey. But I, I celebrate your resilience. And for people, for the whole generation, the best you can do for us is not to tell us those horrible histories. We've had, <laughs> right? We've had enough of it. We want you to tell us stories of hope. We want you to help us. When there is a founder out there, a black founder creating a company, you don't have to give them $100,000. There's something in the UK called CrowdCube. You can invest as low as one pound. Go on that platform. Give one pound to that black founder trying to raise this community, trying to solve a problem. And if you don't have money, when they post something on social media, keep them a like. Yeah. Like, share. Like and share. Those are the simple things that we all can do to support each other. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's not about someone suffer and I'm, I'm rich. You know, I, I sometimes laugh at our I next to individuals, our billionaires. They think they're billionaires, but in the mind of a white person, they're still Africans. <laughs> and just to kind of run that up, um, one good person to, to, to say that uh, would be Oprah Winfrey. You know, there was a very nasty experience Oprah Winfrey passed through that led to uh, our sponsoring the movie Selma. And, and that's one thing. So if people like Oprah Winfrey is not immune to racism and all the horrible things happening in the world, uh, you and I, we're not immune as well, but it's how we yeah. respond to it. That's, that's the message. 
how you respond to this thing is what matters and um, so much love to all of you and um and my views are just my own views they don't represent companies that i consult for or, or work with i'm just i am an african i'm an, I'm michael and i just want to see so much africans emotionally mentally psychologically liberated from all these horrible past and live a life of freedom of abundance and joy wow michael you have been a great guest of the think big for africa podcast thank you very much thank you so so much thank you for having me it's, it's a real pleasure to to the future of your platform thank you very much man thank you